Good morning and welcome to worship on this, on this beautiful day that the Lord's created. Are there any announcements that need to be made for the good of the community? Please rise if you're able. The Holy One raises up the poor from the dust and lifts the needy to inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth belong to the Holy One. Oh, on them God has set the world. Exalt him. Wickedness will perish, righteousness will thunder, for not by mighty will one prevail. The worship of the Holy One through grief and gladness, in the despair and hope, in peace and trial, exalt in the Holy One, find strength in God. Let us pray. Our hearts exalt in you, O God. All knowledge has its origin in you. Our deepest hungers are satisfied as you give counsel and instruct our hearts. By no, be known to us, know that our covenant with you may be strengthened. Give confidence to all who enter this sanctuary that our faith may grow, our love expand, and our hopes find full fulfillment. Show us the path of life and grant us courage to walk in your ways. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
may be seated. Let us approach our God in all truth, confessing the deeds and destructions that have kept us from honoring God and have divided us from other human beings. We cannot undo all the wrong we have done, but we can be cleansed, cleansed from the evil senses to live a more whole, wholesome and joy, joyous life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess the arrogance of your doubts and the philosophy of our busyness crowds out tonight. The Holy Spirit renews in us the covenant we have made with our God, offering us forgiveness and reassuring us that our lawless deeds will be remembered no more. The law of God is planted on our heart, in our hearts and written on our minds, so love and good deeds may become second nature to us. We are set free to express gladness and to encourage one another. Now have the reading of scripture. Our Old Testament reading can be found in 1 Samuel 1, 4 through 20. On the day when Elikon sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her the third. Though the Lord had closed her womb, her rival used to provoke her severely, severely to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on by by year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband, Okan, said to her, Hannah, why, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more than to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Shiloh, uh, Hannah rose and, and presented herself before Before the Lord, now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the door of doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will 
look on the mystery, misery of your servant and and remember me and not forget your servant but will give to your servant a male child then i will set him be him before you as a as a right until the day of his death he shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants and no and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli answered her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make? a drunken spectacle, spectacle of your servant, of yourself, put away your wine. But, but Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I am a woman deeply in trouble. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation of this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace, the God of Israel grant the petition you made you have made to him and she and she said let your servant find favor in your sight then the woman then the woman went her way and ate drank ate and drank with her husband and her con constance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elikar knew his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah con conceived and bore, bore a son. She made, she named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark 13, verses 1 through 8. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings? Then Jesus asked him, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, people Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will this be and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God, open our hearts and our minds to hear your word, to know your presence, and to find comfort in your presence. Lord, we ask for your blessings, your guidance, and your direction. In your name we pray. Amen. 
We hear that Jesus says that the temples that they have just come out of will be coming down. And the disciples are like, huh? What do you mean? For if we understand the measurements of that time, a cubit is approximately 18 to 22 inches. So for the matter of math and figuring, let us figure that it's 20 inches. That means that the stones are way that measure 75 feet by eight feet by 10 feet. So those aren't small stones, are they? They're not small at all. They're big. And to think that they're going to come tumbling down, be thrown down, that everything is going to be destroyed. Jesus says that no stone will be left upon another. And he sits at Mount Olives and tells his, tells his disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, they know that this means that the temples will be destroyed. All of the hard work that's been done to build them and Jesus says, beware, let no one lead you astray. Many will come in my image, in my name, and say, I am he. And they will lead you astray. Jesus says, be careful, be aware, know what's going on around you and keep your faith in what I have told you, what I have done. Jesus knows that one of the next things in this story is going to be his capture, and he'll ultimately end up on the cross. For we're at the end of Mark. We're at the end of the year of Mark. Next week we finish it out one more Sunday and then we start a new new calendar with Advent. So Jesus is saying be prepared. The end is coming. The end is coming. What do we do when the end is coming? We can get all excited and fearful. We can begin to, to wonder what will happen next. And we can be afraid. We can be afraid not sure what to follow. And we can have times like that even now when things come crashing down on us. It doesn't mean that it's the end times, but it could be a death of a loved one, a loss of a job, a tragic accident, a dehabilitating injury, or a crisis in the family. Those things can take us down. They can crush us. But we have to be like Sarah or by Hannah. We have to go to the Lord and ask the Lord for guidance and presence. Things that are going to happen. But God is there and says, I am. I am here to walk with you through all of the trials and tribulations. I walked with Hannah through her trials and tribulations. Hannah 
a young woman who was married to Elkanah. Al just say those words real fast, and then nobody knows if you said them exactly right or not. And so then he was also married to another woman who had many children. And she liked to give Hannah a bad time because Hannah had not had any children. And in the time of Hannah and Elkanah, it was important that you had men in your family for men were who were going to take care of you and provide for you. And if something happened to Elkanah and she had no sons, she would be left to survive on her own, which would mean that she was a dirt poor, mean that she had nothing left being that she was on her own in a world that was not kind to women unless they had a protector of a man. So she goes tired of all of the teasing and snarky remarks and all the things that have gotten said to her because she has not had a child. She goes off and goes to talk to the Lord. And she talks to the Lord. And she talks to the Lord. And she talks to the Lord. Eli, the priest who is sitting there at the temple, watching all that goes on, keeping track of things, sees her sitting there for a long time and he sees her mouth moving but hears no words, sees nothing else. So he is sure that she must be drunk. But Hannah has not had any drink. She comes from a group of people that don't drink, don't cut their hair, live in a in a holy state. And Eli gets after her and says, go away, drunken woman. She says, I'm not drunk. I have come here to talk to the Lord and I've been talking to the Lord all of this time. You've been talking to the Lord all of this time? You've been here a long time. You know, God bless you and your prayers, your requests be made so. Go in peace. So Hannah goes off, goes back to Elkanah and to the others. And they then return back to their home. And when they get to their home, there is time spent. And when one day, Hannah has a son. Now, one of the prayers that she said when she was in the temple was that she would give God her first son. So she took care of Samuel until he was old enough to be on his own and not need nurturing and nutrition from his mother. And then she took him to the temple and gave him to Eli for Eli to care for. And then he goes on and grows and we get the books of first and second Samuel. Jesus calls us to put our concerns, those things that are crushing us, put them down and give them to God. Let God be the one that holds them. 
and helps us walk through that difficult time. Just as he helped Hi Hannah walk through a difficult time, he helps us walk through difficult times. No, none of us know what's going to happen in the future. Just as Jesus predicted that the stones of the temple were going to come down, we have no idea what's going to happen. But we know that if we trust in God and put our faith in Jesus Christ, we will be able to walk through whatever crushes us and come out stronger on the other side. So therefore, follow Jesus. Follow God's commandments and God's presence and walk with God in your, in, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for giving us courage to walk with you. Lead us and guide us and direct us. In your name we pray, amen. Please stand for the hymn of reflection for the beauty of the earth.
there any um, joys or concerns that need to be included in the prayers this morning? Other. Oh, the humble wildcats run one. Right for the next team. Yep. <laughs> Let us pray. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbor, for the church, and all of creation. O oh God, in the washing of water, you set us free from the power of sin and death. Unite all baptized in the covenant you have made with us as we strive for your justice and peace in all the earth. By your mercy, merciful might, you sustain all creation. Stir us from com compliance with the harm we inflict on the earth and urge us to adapt sustainable ways of life that protect and restore our planet. With the selfless power you protect all who take refuge in you. As nations rise against nations, defend all who are displaced or affected by the war or violence. Empower all people and nations to pursue peace. In your presence, you give fully of joy. Care for all who feel joy distant. Be present with people experiencing depression, anxiety, addiction, and all mental illness. Bring them healing and wholeness. Through the years, you have gathered your church and this community for worship, fellowship, formation, and service. Enable us to look beyond the walls of our building to perceive where you are calling us forward. Gracious God, we, we ask that you be with all of the school system, all of the parents and grandparents and friends of the football team and take care of our football players as they play in the state tournament. Lord, we just place them and all of the students in your hands, and we trust in your love and your mercy. And Lord, it's with thanksgiving that we remember John Berkemer and Janet Sirks and all of those who have passed before us. We remember the saints and the angels who delight in your everlasting presence as they live lives inspire ours, provoke us to always, us always to love and hold fast to the confessions of your hope in your, in you. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love and all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our savior. Amen. And let us continue with the prayer that was taught, that all were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are encouraged to give as God has blessed us, bringing our offerings not to win God's favor, but to express our thanks, not out of habit, but out of caring, out of a, but as a caring community that provokes one another to love and do good deeds. <laughs> Let us pray the prayer of dedication. Our hearts are glad and our souls rejoice in the opportunity to share. Here are the fruits of your generosity and on our hard work. In thanks for the perfect offering of Jesus Christ, we bring ourselves with our gifts. Show us to come in your efforts to build wholesome relationships, extend our church, Minister in your name. Our parting hymn is now thank we now thank the all our God and it's on three seventy four. baptizes with power, the spirit of expectations and hope. Lead, strengthen, and guide you this week and always. Amen.